I've now finished the, um, the sequel for How Do They Come? Uh, and that also fits into a trilogy concept. And the concept there is that How Do They Come is about people who are so poor and basically so ignorant that they're victims. They have to be victims. Power game is about the rich and the powerful. How do they come to is about the people in between, the people who are, um, are not poor. They have some money. They have cell phones. They have a business sense. They have ambition. They have education. But they're up against globalization. Right? Back to the same theme. Can the little guy get through? But this time, it's that middle class in Jamaica that I think is, a, is maybe more fascinating than any other. Because they, they do have education, they do have this amazing ambition, they, they, and they do have this amazing communication. You know, you, you know, the sort of musicians, you know, that all have, you know, palm pilots and, and, and cell phones and fly around the world and, and thing. And, and, and um, that's a world that it explores. And it's very, very, very different because, you know, Jimmy Cliff character, Ivan, comes out of jail 25 years later, 30 years later, completely crippled. Totally Excuse crippled. me, didn't he die? No, he didn't die. I had the feeling that on that, on that like, was it Lime Key, that yeah. he, got, he got gunned down? Well, he got gunned down. But I tell you, I saw a guy in Dominica who had been shot five times point-blank range by a jealous mother. And um, the guy was walking around, he was okay. And I thought, my God, you know. And, and um, of course, one day, and I, I kept saying to Jimmy, you know, it can't work, can't work, because the guy died. And then one day a scene came to me that, that made it work. And the scene is, they take him off the beach, they take him to the hospital, and they, they think he's dead. And a doctor comes and takes his pulse and looks in his eye and says, get him to the right away. And um, a reporter, and, and when they lift him up, I said, take it easy with him, do, do, be careful, be careful. And, and a reporter was saying, well, you're, you're being very solicitous of, of, um, of a vicious killer. Uh, why? And the doctor said, why? He said, because he wrote a song that was playing on my car radio. The night I asked my wife to marry me, and she said yes, that's why. In other words, it is the power of his music that saved him. Saved his life, but didn't save him from Hilton. Hilton wanted to kill him, because he was afraid to Hilton. <coughs> so all his years in jail were, you know, purgatory. And he comes out a complete, um, completely, complete wreck of a human being. Totally, totally wrecked crippled, fucked up human being. I mean, he's so in such bad shape that when he gets out, the first thing he does is he sees people looking at him on the street, you know, even in Kingston they're doing that. And he takes his shirt and puts it over his head. And then he walks down the road a little bit further on and, and he sees a pair of, 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 of smashed dark glasses thrown away and he picks those up and puts them on his over his eyes and all of a sudden <laughs> in 200 yards he looks dangerous again <laughs> you know and 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 the, the the story there of course his his story is um how he goes from that to being a star again to being able to perform and hold and uh, hold an audience and um thrill an audience and write music and record music again and record music in his own little studio not at the mercy of Hilton you know um, and um, so I think it I think I, 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 I don't think I'd be repeating myself at all if I made how did they come to was there an element of just coming out looking for his royalties Yes, Looking very much people so. Who own money. Very much so. And Rupert, who by now is a grown man, is the one who says he'll go and get his royalties for him from Hilton. 
And Rupert is the is the Rasta boy. Yeah, well, he's now a big man, uh -huh. right? But he's sort of country gentleman. He's a, he's a, he's a guy who lives in the country. And so you're taking it real time. It takes place in the present. Yeah. And how do they come took place in 1972? Yeah. No real time. And um, and of course it's when Hilton realizes that Rupert is a threat to him, and um, and decides to you know and, and attempts to kill him. That Ivan gets drawn back. It's all spaghetti western thing, you know. Ivan gets drawn back into into the fight. Out of the heart of they come came some recognition, and then the determination to make a slightly different type of film. What was the motivation that that brought you to doing No Place Like Home? Now, this is a film that people haven't seen yet, mm -hmm. and many people don't know about. I was obsessed with realism. Always been obsessed with realism. I felt that that um, that, 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 that that the realists in film, Ken Loach, John Cassavetes, um, Italian um, Pontecorvo, all of them, all the people who were on the, on the cutting edge of realism, were like communists or socialists or, you know, very serious and, and, and this and that. And I felt that I could, could be as realistic as they were, but with a smile, with some humor, with a light touch. And um, so No Place Like Home was totally, in my mind, totally an exercise in realism to push the, the, to push the, um, the limits of realism to the point where half of it was completely spontaneous and only half of it was written. So I had to shoot the spontaneous stuff first to, to, um, to shoot the other stuff that would make the story move forward. Well, the best illustration of that, I guess, is that when they come